So we have quorum, so I'll call us to order at 536. Uh, Shauna's out sick tonight, so Elin's going to try and... Uh, I'm, write, I'm writing notes so I can help. Okay. Um, Elin's going to help us with a minute. All right. Is there any public comment at this time? All right. And then I'll move ahead. Uh, on the consent or, or agenda, we have pay orders and to approve the minutes from the 123-18 meeting and to accept the res resignation. I'll make a motion. All right. So Louis makes the motion. Is there a second? Second. Brad? All right. All those in favor of approving the consent agenda, please say aye. 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 Okay. Opposed? Any abstentions? All right. Down to executive limitations monitoring report and update. Uh, the financial report was included in the packet. Any comments, questions on the financial reports that are included? Uh, I don't really, other than, you know, it's uh, 124.9 going down to 33, but we don't quite know why, right? When are we going to know what these encumbrances are exactly, Howard? You know? Uh, well, you know, we ask people to fill the encumbrance. Everybody has their little piece of the budget, and it doesn't always get in. And sometimes there's just no need for it at this point, and there's no estimate of it. Um, Everything will shut down here on uh, May 1st, and after that, you won't be able to put in any more encumbrances unless it's an emergency, because by then, the school year will be pretty much over. So, plus we have to take the time to convert, and our conversion is in process right now. We have uh, Infinite Visions working on a conversion. So as soon as that conversion is done, they're supposed to meet with us on March the 12th, I believe. But as far as your question in regards to that, um, most of the encumbrances that we know of are in here. The ones that people, so what we do now, and, and Patrick knows, we meet with all the principals and we meet with us as a group and we go through the financial statements and we try to estimate in the amounts that are unencumbered, will we use that number, okay? Line by line. And line by line, we go through it every month now. And, uh, you know, and we go through the whole process. So we are looking at them. We, people just haven't put in the encumbrances yet until they know who the vendors are going to be and the whole aspect of that. So. And a good example is, so Kelly Services for Substitutes. So many schools still have a, a fair bit of money in unencumbered uh, balance at the end for, for that line. Um, and we have conversations and we talk about expecting that to get spent down, but in terms of encumbering, it just hasn't been encumbered. Would you say that that's the worst case scenario then? You know, we've been looking at this for a couple of months now in, in all the budgets, really. Yeah, I'd say that's, I, I that's pretty say true. When, when there's something we're not sure of, we tend to err on the conservative side. Uh, so if somebody's saying, I'm not really sure if we'll use that all, we assume it will all get spent. So I would say, yeah, it's, it's conservative. Not to say that something couldn't happen that we're not anticipating that changes that, but as best we can tell, what you see for that, that ending balance of 33000 um, is conservative. Not the big kind of money we've had in years past, is it? Nope. Personally, I think it's closer to what it ought to be, rather than hundreds of thousands of dollars each year for every school in the SU unspent that... Which, should, I, should I ask my usual question? <laughs> What's a fair percentage of that? <laughs> <laughs> no, I... It's whatever 33.4 is divided by $8 million. <laughs> I mean, that has been the goal, really, to try to narrow that. I think mean, that was one of your yeah. goals. Collectively, we were carrying forward just shy of $1.5 million in fund balance every year. Um, and I think that's too large a sum collectively to be carrying forward. On um, 28. Yeah, right. So we carried into 2018 just shy of $1.5 million, thinking about all six schools combined plus the SU. 28 something million. Oh, right, on 28 million. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So. 
you know, 5% or whatever that is. Yeah. And that's including that's some, of the, some of the obscure capital funds that the individual schools no, are trying to doesn't, doesn't include any of those. those. It doesn't. Any of those special funds are outside of that. Okay. No, what, what misses a lot is really where a lot of these come up with is uh, we've sort of over budgeted somewhat on uh, substitutes over the years and we've also not intentionally but that's the way it's worked out and a lot of times in health care right you can you can be off by a pretty good amount depending on but you don't know who's even going to work for you sometimes until mid-april so you have no idea what that benefits package is going to be and sometimes it goes in your favor sometimes it doesn't well, as always, I, time I ask this question, it's something under 5%, but, you know, 1% or 2% might be in line in corporate world, I suppose. So, normal. Why be somebody did it. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions around the financial report? Also um, included was the food service update. Are there any questions about that? Brad, do you have any questions? I did not. No. Okay. All right. Well, Brad, you're <laughs> You got to have a question for us. <laughs> Saving mine for Bristol. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that, that, that link doesn't open. That's why I don't have a question. <laughs> I, I would ask the question: Are we, are we, you continuing to feel that we're getting the economies of scale that we had hoped to achieve by merging? Yeah, I think everything we we were hoping to achieve by joining forces with Addison Northwest, we're seeing. And we're still budgeted for the reduction in subsidy. Yeah, in, in the 22,000, I think, is the reduction. Yeah, it's not much, but something. Which was, uh, it would have been larger, except for some increases in health care for employees of the service. So we were originally anticipating a, a greater reduction to that subsidy, uh, but had to make an adjustment to account for those increased expenses. Bought any equipment yet, Howard? Yeah, so. uh, we're looking. We're looking at it. Uh, we've got it scheduled over the next five years, and hopefully, uh, we can get some of the equipment modified, changed, or repaired. So. Yeah. No equipment. We don't own much. Well, the individual schools owned it, but now we will own it because we'll own the individual schools. So. Will that? Will there be new asset lines? Um, yes. Yeah. Okay, I did have some questions. <laughs> a, I knew you joining with A N W S U E S D. Can you say it? As in Northwest School District. Northwest School District. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> All right, no other questions? The next item we have is to take action on accepting the interpretation for 2.1 treatment of students and parents and guardians. So maybe just a reminder of procedurally what has led to this coming before you tonight. So, I drafted the initial interpretation, shared it with the Policy and Governance Committee. Policy and Governance Committee sure reviewed it. We discussed it, um, went through section by section at a Policy and Governance Committee meeting, um, took those recommendations into consideration, redrafted the interpretation, and now you're seeing it for the first time as an executive committee. I 
Well, I'll move it. All right. <laughs> Great. Is there a second? I'll second. All right. Want to discuss it? Patrick, I think we, you know, went through it pretty, <laughs> pretty thoroughly in the uh, policy and governance committee. Mm -hmm. So personally, I feel good about it. Did you get a second? I did. You. You. Right. You. <laughs> Sorry. I did, it was you. I just want to give everybody a chance to, if they have something, a comment they want to make. It's interesting because three of us sit on that policy and governance, so we know. It's always a little quiet because it's we've already. Right, and that, so, but, better, but there's three yeah. others that don't, so if you have, I want to give you an opportunity if you have a comment. So, that, so now what's going to happen is now the local boards, we're going to accept the interpretation. And the report's going to go to the local boards. Go to the local boards. And at that time, then board chairs would fill out that form, that feedback form. I'm not looking for it. I can't look for it and do this. <laughs> Which, that's where you would, if you have any feedback, when you take action on the report, that's where you put the feedback, and then we would revisit that feedback at this meeting. Mm -hmm. But we'll, we'll all be looking for that form. Is that included in the individual it's, packets? It's not. It's, okay. It was not included in the locals, so that's what that's what we, okay. Julian and I were just saying, if we can get it to people so they know. But, um, there are several forms in the on the dry on the policy and governance drive, so, so we have to kind of figure out which one it is. Right. Um, my only thoughts, again, I think I expressed them in the committee, is that you know that we uh, the part about file storage, uh, data file storage, that that you know that there are uh, IT procedures, um, you know, as, as evidence for that, and, and that they're being followed. You know, backup procedures. So, yes, we do have we do have those procedures, and they are being followed. Um, I think this goes to whatever section. That is. I'm looking for this section. Uh, Thirty-one. Thirty-one. Collecting, reviewing, transmitting, and storing student family information. Right, so there, so there's some file storage procedures, which, which apply to both digital storage as well as the hard copy storage, and there are procedures in place for who can access what records, when, and how. Yep. Um, and to my knowledge, those are being followed. Well, that's it's going to be evidence when this is monitored. So. Yep. Yeah. I just wanted to be sure that if you put it as evidence that we have it, then <laughs> yep. it'll support. We support it. Any other comments on the uh, interpretation? Okay. So, all those in favor of accepting the interpretation for 2.1 treatment of students and parents and guardians, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. Next is another action item to accept the interpretation on 2.7. Compensation and benefits, and again, that went through the same process. Um, the Policy and Governance Committee went through that um, section by section, and uh, that's what you have there. These are the yellow changes on three, four. Or are we just no, this is two point two point seven. Compensation and benefits. So. Okay. 
Sorry. Got it. Do I have to wait for somebody to move it? Fine. Are you moving it? <laughs> I guess it, it seems weird for me to move it since I'm typing. Okay. I move we accept the interpretation of the point seven compensation and benefits. And then I did have a question. And then is there a second? Louis. All right. Now you have a question? So I thought, and I could be really easily confused, I thought that there was going to be a change around the one, no event longer than one year. Yeah, so I think ultimately there will be, and I think what we had talked about was timeline-wise in the process, the mm -hmm. time to change the language of the policy is after the monitor okay. report's been written. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we sort of... We're moving forward knowing that language is likely to be recommended to be changed, but okay. can't do anything about it just yet. Great. Which item in 27 were you referring to? That you can't have a contract that's longer than a year. Right, the contract, yeah. Mm -hmm. And part of what came up in conversation at the Policy and Governance Committee around that was, so snow plowing contracts, for example, or the bus contract. Like we have, as part of routine business, which is fairly normal around the state, there are some contracts that we have that are multi-year contracts. So to have policy language that, that says under no circumstances can contracts extend beyond one year conflicts with what practice is and really what is in our best interest. Um, so it is what it is now um, and we'll sort of work forward with this and I'll have to report non-compliance when we get to that part. And my recommendation in terms of a plan moving forward would be that we change the language to reflect what is current best practice. Sure. To allow up to three or five years. Yeah. And, and part of the conversation will be around what should the language change be and how specific do we want to be because the more specific we are, the easier it might be to follow, but also the more we're pigeonholing ourselves into something pretty precise that <coughs> may create further complications down the road. So we'll have to talk that through and determine what makes the most sense. I can't think of anything that's longer than a five-year contract now. No, how about we have a $29 million bond? bond? That's a little longer. Yeah. Can you do that? <laughs> good question. <laughs> is that a contract? <laughs> you could argue it is. <clears throat> so oh, no yeah, longer than 30-year contract. There you go. <laughs> that would help us immensely. <laughs> All right. Any other questions? Okay. All those in favor of accepting the interpretation for 2.7 compensation and benefits, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? And I did find what I believe to be the monitoring worksheet, so the, the feedback worksheet yes. for executive limitations, and I shared that with each of the board chairs that are sitting here, so you have that further. For your local feedback. Great. Our next item is to accept the, mo uh, the auditor's report. No, there's... Are you going to move it? So moved. <laughs> I keep clicking and C34, your thing keeps coming up. I don't know. Oh, do you want to open this one? It's uh, 33 no, pages. I, I, <laughs> yeah, that was long. Is there a second? A second. All right. Thank you, Chris. All right. Now you can discuss. Anyway. This seems very different, and I like it. And I don't know if it's because I'm not sure if it really is different or if I'm thinking back to one pre several years ago, but I don't. Um, it's not different. Yeah. I thought I remembered the bit about possible changes to make being in the very beginning, and I didn't remember as many numbers that were truly our numbers in it. But. Um, I think the discussion that you're, you're trying to recall is internal reports, not the no, external reports. Definitely from Jeff Bradley. Really? Yeah. But. Um, not that I can recall. Okay. Yeah. And it's my, I've been here four years now and I don't recall anything like that. So. Any other questions? Are there aspects, Howard, that you would like to call our attention to? No, I think uh, pretty much um, we've addressed it as we've gone forward. Um, we did have some write-ups on here, which we had already brought 
to the board back under the AOE, and they were repeated because he had to repeat them here, right? Because he's the order, he's reading them in the minutes. So he just put in the same things that they put in. So even though they were were identified through the AOE monitoring process, which is separate from the audit, yeah. um, and we had corrected them before he even conducted the audit, That's he correct. still had to make reference to them in yep. his report. Anytime you have federal dollars, it has to be reported that way. So. It is nice to know that the recommendations for changes have been made before he made the recommendations to make the changes. <laughs> And those are all, they start on 25, right? Yeah. And do we have a multi-year contract with him? It Jeff, we just, um, we have a two-year contract with him with a uh, potential renewal for the consolidated year for the first year. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't have to be, but it's an option. He's given us a price on both, because this, Fiscal year 18 will be the same as the fiscal year for 17. It's fiscal year 19 at audit that will be consolidated. So it won't be until 19. Right. So, but we do. We have a multi-year contract with them. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions on the audit? All right. All those in favor of accepting the auditor's report? Court, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. Motion carries. Okay. Down to board management and governance. An update. The policy and governance committee was included in your packet. Any questions regarding that update? It's a great outline of the work that the policy and governance committee has been doing. like to thank them for doing all that, <clears throat> making things uh, more cohesive and run smoother. I don't know if I can speak to the rest of it, but I enjoy that work because you really feel like you're getting into it and understanding it. I love that the work that goes to school. Do you have you know, any idea of the future prospects for that group or that role in the SD? I'm not sure. I know that the goal of that group is to finish the work before <coughs> the SD board goes into effect. So in, we're working hard to get things On set up. Track that right. We, that, so they're know. set up to go so they can yeah. take, take yeah. it from there. But Four months left, right? Yeah. That's <laughs> getting there. So no plan to have an ongoing? Not yet, because the, I mean, the way it's set up, we set up to get through all the policies once and mm -hmm. have the interpretations drafted. So the interpretations are draft, drafted in the, at the very minimum. Some of them have reports. But then the idea is that the SD board can take those uh, interpretations and hopefully divide the work among the board, mm -hmm. you know, that, you're, that one person isn't just writing the, the report all the time, but a, a, you know, a couple might work on this one, and a couple might work on that one for the board stuff, and and then that that work can be shared by the, the whole new board. I think we're even finding this year that the workload is less than it's been in the past because we we've, we've done some of the work already. So there's been what, one or two or three meetings this year that yes. we didn't need to have that were scheduled because of the work that's done so far. Mm -hmm. Get through them annually with one board. It's a tall order. Yep. But if it's sufficiently on you know, on that track that Val has often described as a optimal implementation of policy and governance, then it's doable. Yeah. I think we create in our work with the interpretations to make them understandable for somebody who's looking at it for the first time. I think that's a big help. Because when you read it, you you understand what the policy is. The work has been done to understand what it's saying to you. And then, where when when we first started, we didn't necessarily have that understanding. We were trying to figure it out. 
changing a lot. And I think that the collective work in the interpretations has been valuable because then there's multiple perspectives at the table as we interpret the language so that um, I think it, it makes it that much more understandable by a range of folks having that wide perspective. Along then. Um, our next uh, action item is a policy language change um, to C1.0, and that's our ends. Um, in, in the feedback process, the Starksboro Board sent feedback back about adding some language around equity to the ends policy. So the Policy and Gov Governments Committee considered that and we had a discussion, and so they're proposing some ad additional language to the ends, and that is included in the packet. And I think it online it's highlighted so you can see where the, the language, additional language is, and that is even outlined in here in, in your policy and governance update. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is the preamble also? New? I think that's, I think it's just, just that added under 1.0 that up at the... Just the yellow. Yes. Furthermore. Well, I one, I think, one point of clarification, literally the number 1.0 yes. is new. That hasn't yes. been there. Yeah, okay, all right. right. We, <laughs> we added, so as, as Karen and I were looking at how to reference this, so we had 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, .1 which is consistent with the other um, <coughs> policies. What was missing, there was no identifier for the that sort of narrative at the top as others had. Like the policy two has starts with 2.0 and then goes into 2.1, 2.2, 2.3. So because we weren't actually adding to just 1.1 or just 1.2 or just 1.3, the recommendation was for that, uh, that sort of lead in at the top. We decided it made sense to put a 1.0 there and reference that. Well, my only question with this is, you know, I. Again, I unfortunately missed an important meeting on this, but you know, uh, I thought there was some talk about a separate equity policy or a state-wide policy coming. Are we, I don't know, getting ahead of ourselves a little bit? I mean, this is a big deal, you know, to, to change your ends uh, policies. I think, um, and you know, it implies a new interpretation for you, Patrick, and and and. Uh, Obviously, the disaggregation of the performance data, which we have never, or you know, I haven't seen in a long time. Are we setting up here for non-compliance? Are you, are you able to, you know, interpret that and supply? You know, what do you think? Yeah, I, I think it's fine. Um, we talked about this at the so. There are a few questions in yes. there that I have some thoughts on. Um, so the first one, I, I think yes, there is a lot of work happening at the state level about an equity policy and. Um, and we talked about a separate equity policy potentially down the road for MAUSD, and I don't think this prohibits that. I think this is something that can happen in the meantime and could be in addition to down the road. I also think this reflects the work that is so embedded in, in what's happening right now anyway. Um, I don't think this, this doesn't change course for us much at all. Like this reflects what is already very important to the work that we're doing. Um, and it might have an impact in terms of what's reported and how it's reported in the ends, and we can work through that. Um, and having talked with Katrina, I know she's on the same page, like that this, this can work. So I think there are two things that I got out of being there, and one was that this partially reflects the desire to see a little bit more <coughs> disaggregation in the data that we see, which, but there is, we can't, the only way to make a request for that is through the policy. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's part, I think that's part of why we started. But there's also a real excitement about putting something like this in, I think, especially for those of us who like, well, might not be here for the next policy, to wait for uh, a policy. This seems really important. Mm -hmm. I have no objection to it at all, philosophically. I mean, you know, one might argue devil's advocate. I mean, the, the 
other ends, you know, talk about all students. You know, I mean, you really need to say this. You're already saying it's all students, including those of different, uh, you know, religion, class, geography, disability, language. All is all, but we're choosing to just spell this out, and um, you know, I'm, I'm fine with it as long as you can, you know, as long as it doesn't bind us to non-compliance. Well, part of the conversation too was. Um, our, our understanding is that even though it spells out a number of specific um, sort of subgroups, if you will, mm -hmm. the expectation isn't that each of those subgroups is disaggregated mm -hmm. in the reporting. Because frankly, some of those subgroups were small enough that it would be very identifiable and we couldn't in good conscience put in a report very identifiable information about how the three students that are in that one subgroup across all of our schools performed. So um, there was that sort of caveat to this language and the disaggregation of the report. I, I would just say that the redundancy uh, toward this end is great. <laughs> to, to give clear, just uh, clarity that that is an expectation. Uh, and the fact that you are comfortable and it doesn't seem to represent a huge shift for your workload, that's, that's great to hear. Just, just, yeah, just, let me see. I just want to give Rebecca or Kristen a chance. Do um, you have any comments? I agree with Louie. Cindy, as a member of the Policy and Governance Committee, yes. do you have a comment? I do, I do. So um, at our last meeting, we were going through this language quite a bit, and we had the equity language that the BSBA had put out as a, as a reference in deciding how much or how little uh, based on, you know, and just going through this language. And um, one of the issues we brought up, Brad, was your concern about almost setting up for failure, we, you know, in terms of um, administration being able to provide the evidence. but. You know, we know that, that the language and the highlight, it, it doesn't say it has to, it basically says characteristics such as, and then it has a whole long list of possibilities, but it doesn't necessarily mean that for our school, all of those things have to be in a report in order to be in compliance. So that was discussed a little bit. Nancy, another member of our Policy and Governance Committee. I think that the language, um, we, we talked a lot about the idea that the language definitely has implications for the kind of data that will be in the future in ENDS monitoring reports. But we also talked a lot about the idea of we know we're going to see gaps to start and what we're, you know, what the ENDS policy really ask the boards are, uh, is are we making reasonable progress over time? So it's going to call on our data systems to be able to tell us whether the gaps are narrowing and are they narrowing at a rate that the board feels is reasonable. And that, that's an, th those trends over time as far as the results of different subgroups is really important to track if we're going to know for certain that our schools are truly effective for all <coughs> kids. Brad? I, I agree, and, I, and again, I think it's, it's ambitious, not only the data, mm -hmm. but, but the new board's interpretation of, that, of those trends, as there will be significant disparities that we know. So what, you know, what is individual, or what is progress on this will be a matter of interpretation like anything else, but it's, it's a challenging one. Or will be, but uh, I support it. Any other questions or comments? Okay, we got a little ahead of ourselves because we don't really have any emotion, so <laughs> we just got right into it. So I'll make the motion to do what we just did to. to uh, <laughs> to accept the policy language change recommendations? Yes, thank you. All right, is there a second? I'll second. Thank you, Chris. Uh, any more last comments? 
All those in favor of accepting the policy language change recommendations for the C 1.0 N's, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Good job, Nancy. Our next item is uh, another policy language change. It was uh, around policy C3.4 monitoring superintendent performance, and we <coughs> talked about it for several meetings. It involved removing a, a sort of calendar list at the bottom of the policy that we that was out of compliance. The calendar didn't jive with our work plan, so rather than try and make it, make it jive when the work calendar can change yearly, um, the language was changed to cover that, um, and that you can see in your packet. Um, there's some wording added and some wording removed around 3.4, specifically item number five. So, we need a motion. So moved. All right, go ahead. Is there a second? I'll second. All right, are there any comments? We've seen it a couple times, so. Okay. So, just for clarity, so the, the calendar that we've been accustomed to using over the last few years will no longer be? No, this is specifically in the policy, there was a list of, of the policy, the method it was in, um, the method in which it was monitored and the frequency in which it was monitored. So just and, striking. Right. We will still there's still a board work plan that'll be in place that'll be set up every year that'll right. okay. cover. But rather than most of them all of them. All of them said <laughs> annually. So rather than have all that, the language would just, just change to add the word annually and then another statement there to sort of clarify mm -hmm. what would happen. So, nobody has any questions? I have, uh, I have a question about this language right here. So we have a policy language change and then a comma and then consider changing the calendar. Is that a separate item or just a description? <coughs> just a description. Language? So, Great. so that okay. we, because what's happened, well, what's, it's confusing when we're preparing the agenda. Patrick and I have been to the meetings and know what it means, yeah. but Karen has not been to the meeting, so trying to make it so that everybody in our little triangle can understand. And yeah. that, you know, reduces the things that get missed if everybody, yeah. under, we all understand. And articulating, understand. no, that's, a, that's an interpretation that they're going to be approving. Oh, that's a monitoring report they're going to approve. Uh, that's actually a language change of the policy. It's, right, that's fine. I just wanted to make sure it was the same. <clears throat> all right, so all those in favor of accepting the policy language change around the calendar, please say aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. Next, um, to accept the monitoring report for 3.4, uh, monitoring the superintendent's performance. So that's the monitoring report that was written. And you saw it last time, but there was a piece of evidence that you had asked to be added. So that was after discussion with the Policy and Governance Committee, um, we determined that it was best to be added as evidence. And I don't see that it's um, highlighted. Highlighted. So now i got to find out where it is. Okay, yes, it is. It's item number five, and it's the update January 2018 under data. The last, I think the last two sentences were adjusted. The executive committee reviewed and considered the input from local boards prior to accepting a monitoring report. While there is a method in place, I report that local boards are not consistent in providing and returning the form. So that was after a discussion at the policy and governance. The best, the best way we all came up with, with getting that in there to the use of the form. 
trying to get one last dig in at those <laughs> local boards. <laughs> Inefficiency. So you saw this last last month, and that was the only change. Then. That was the only change. Okay. So. In that case, I will move the acceptance. Okay. Is there a second? Sure. I'll second. Thank you, Louie. All right. Any other questions? All those in favor of accepting the monitoring report for C3.4, monitoring the superintendent's performance, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. Uh, next, we have another action item to authorize the chair to sign the audit representation letter. So moved. Thank you. Elin, is there a second? Second. Thank you. Any questions? This would be for 1819? For the audit that was just completed. <clears throat> okay, what do you have to sign on the, the, the accept, official acceptance? Of? It's, uh, as I understand it, correct me if I'm wrong, hard, but I believe it's, it basically says that you're promising you're not hiding anything from the auditor. Anything additional? What it is is a whole litany of representations <coughs> that we make to the auditor, that we make a positive statement that we agree with these things or we have these things. Mm -hmm. This has been a thing that's been in the standards for about 30 years now. Mm -hmm. Multiple pages. 34 items on one and A through Y. <coughs> <coughs> one. Mm -hmm. And is it different than the uh, document that the local chair signed for their own audits? No. No, it's the same. Pretty, same. It's pretty boring. Yes, you yeah. Okay. And so there, then it's similar to what the unified board will be signing. Exactly. Yeah. Which will be in two years, not one year. <laughs> this next one is oh, 1718, which is still the individual board. So. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions? All right. All those in favor of authorizing the chair to sign the audit representation letter, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. Are we in need of an executive session? Um, is there any public comment at this time? Um, Louis. I had a question I meant to mention to you, sort of a other category. I wanted to ask a question, if I could, regarding next year's budget. And if we have a few minutes for Patrick to respond, if it's okay with you, Don, I'd love to just, if that you think that's appropriate. Can, <laughs> can I add on? I thought there was at some point we were going to, and maybe we'll hear it in our local boards from the members, we were going to, there was going to be some sort of directive from the new board about what they wanted us to do or say or not say or not do at our town hall meetings, at our town meetings. Yeah, so I think we can... We have a couple minutes. I think we can briefly. So I don't know if that, address, that's sort of address. about the budget and what we might want to say. So, is, yeah. your, is it a? It's a brief question. Okay. So, a number of people have asked me about pathways, the pathways program, going forward, and concerns. I've heard concerns from several folks about that, and so I know that there's there's different information out there. I just wanted. To to give Patrick a chance to <coughs> see if he can outline the plan. I know it's maybe preliminary a bit, but uh, just as you see it at this point. Sure. It's a. So I've, I've had people ask some questions about that, and I've heard sort of the rumor mill ranging from personalized learning, of which Pathways is sort of a part of is going away in Mount Avon. I've heard Pathways is going away, and, and neither of those is true. Um, we are looking at, um, and even thinking back years ago when the Pathways program began, the whole idea was to look at ways to um, 
provide these personalized learning opportunities for students. Um, and it was never intended to be for a subset of students. It was really, ideally, experiences that we're looking to provide for all students. Um, many students have opportunities in different ways right now to experience personalized learning, but definitely not all students. So we're looking at how we can really expand <coughs> opportunities for students to have those personalized learning experiences throughout the school. Um, students that are in the Pathways program currently will have a very similar experience next year to what they're having now, and we're going to look to expand that from there. A lot of details still to get worked out, um, but we need to move in that direction. And the work that's been happening with proficiencies over the past few years at Mount Aid positions the school really well <coughs> to look at expanding those opportunities more broadly throughout the school. That sounds great. And I would just add, I think there's, there's a lot of enthusiasm out in the community for sort of uh, enriching that, the whole menu of possibilities for, for uh, community and, and learning in different ways, different places. So. And I actually just met today with the two co-facilitators of the community action team um, as part of our strategic planning work. Mm -hmm. and. And all throughout the work that they're putting together are these opportunities for students to be connected with their community in various ways. Um, and personalized learning, for sure, can, can be included in that work and is a significant sort of factor in the kinds of connections we're looking to create between the community and the schools. That's good to hear. Yeah, it's exciting. So, well, Elon had, had, you know, in, in the context of, of what to talk about at town meeting, is it appropriate to hear from Patrick and Howard a Montpelier update at this point? I mean, involving, you know, these tax rates that we've estimated in our books are clearly not going to be the ones uh, that, uh, that evolve, or I, I suppose that's a state reach, but but it doesn't seem like it. Where, where are we, and, you know, or what would you say to the to our constituents at Tennessee? I'm not sure I know what to say in terms of what's <laughs> clear right now. Um, except that there's talk of, of funding education in a different manner. In what manner? Hard to know exactly where it's going to land. And when? Hard to know exactly where it's going to land. And you can read and you can listen to different people and you might get some different information about when. Last thing I saw was that it, it isn't expected that that will happen for next year. Right. So then the projections that we have are as accurate as they can be. But but not, because I mean the, the spending is a third less in the United right. State than we than we thought. So so you know, is that a fair statement that, that but right. if, so, if, if income, you know, if the new tax, if the new funding mechanisms and there are a couple formulas out there right Eric, but if, if that's deferred and you know we talk about that and think about it. The traditional the traditional statewide yield and rate uh, seems poised to go down by a fairly significant amount. Yeah, I think that because of where budgets are coming in, um, and assuming they all pass at that level, um, I think that is going to have an impact on the yield, which the yield always changes after we've passed budgets. That's just sort of how the process works. It has to change after the budgets are passed because they need to know how much money to actually raise through the through taxes. Um, and it does appear as though the yield will shift in a way that benefits us in terms of a reduced tax rate. I, don't, I can't say what I anticipate the change to be and it'll be different for different towns. <clears throat> and I don't know what the impact will be in terms of the 5% change, so. The only thing I can add is originally the projections that went to Montpelier from all the business managers was 3.52%, in my recollection. And it turned out that we only need 1% to 2%. And that's, but as far as modifying the numbers now, I think that's going to be done somewhere between now and the end of the legislative session, so we're not going to really know how it's going to impact. Yeah. And usually the yield, and I get that question a lot, asking me how come the rates in the booklets do not match what you get billed. Mm -hmm. It's because of the change in the yield, and that yield is usually established sometime before they uh, adjourn in, mm -hmm. in May. Or and sometimes the change in the CLA. Yeah, Sometimes exactly. the CLA changes after you know the books are printed for town meeting, and that has obviously a significant impact on the tax rate. But aside from an income-based education tax, you know, again back to the traditional formula, it seems to me that uh, you know it's as much as a third 
Um, but anyway, uh, point being that that you know <laughs> it's good news. It might be good good to talk about you know especially in the context of another six point eight cents on the bond. You know, New Haven's already looking at six cents. So, you know, I, New Haveners would be welcome. You know, that would be welcome news at our town meeting mm -hmm. uh, to, to sort of, yeah, and maybe maybe our representatives can take the floor and, and speak to that. But, yeah. So, I right, think it's welcome. fair to say that it should be good news. I think it's hard to be precise about sure. how good it's going to be. Okay. And Elin, uh, along, just as a quick sort of answer to your question. Um, if I remember correctly, at the SD board meeting, SD board members decided that they would attend the local meetings. Um, and um, we had the flyer that went out to use as talking points. Um, I just recalling that there are some frequently asked questions we worked on the, in my vacation mode. I don't think I sent out. So I can send those out. Um, but you know, um, we're hoping that locals can be there to sort of help. But again, I sent that message out to encourage you to put spread the word yes. that tomorrow night's right. the night to come and get your questions answered. So if you know somebody who's got SD board questions, budget questions, tomorrow night here in the large cafeteria, seven o'clock. So probably we should proactively ask the moderator of the meeting if if he will allow somebody from the new board to speak. Because I think in Bristol that really needs to be done ahead of time. Right. And I, know and I don't in, know how other towns work. I know in Moncton, as long as you're a town a resident of the town, that usually he'll let you speak. Mm -hmm. If not, he asks, you have to get permission from the, the floor to do it. But, um, mm -hmm. yeah. but it's not in the agenda. No. So, yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, does somebody have the evaluation up? Because we really, I don't want to slow up the local meetings. Does anybody have that open, Brad? Do you know <laughs> Can you open it? <laughs> Can you run through it real quick? And I'll do it on my phone. It's miserable. What is the level of engagement of all board members? High level. Was the agenda followed? Yes. yes. Was the agenda linked to the annual work plan? Yes. 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 <laughs> Was yes. there sufficient time or time spent on community linkage? No. I mean, yes. That's the one, that's the one that we usually <laughs> yes kind of no. fail at that one. I don't know. All right. Too so much of it was a lot. Okay. Um, sufficient time on ends. Yes. Yes. No. Yep. Uh, sufficient board time on executive limitations. Mm -hmm. Consent agenda was used appropriately. Yes. Yes. What went well? Very excited about our change to 1.0. We did something with hands policy, something yeah. major. When's the last time that happened? Long time. Any concerns with the meeting? No. Any ways it could be improved? That concludes our evaluation. And as a brief note, this is Brad's official last meeting. <laughs> if you have your remaining friends, feel free to have them write them in so that you can serve the remaining four months. <laughs> Thanks, Brad. All right, uh, motion to adjourn. Won't be the same without it. <laughs> I'll make the motion. All right, thank you. <laughs> Is there a second? Second. All right. All right. All those in favor of adjourning at 6.30, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Say an extension. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, is everybody in the large cafeteria in Mount Easier? That's correct. Okay.